Life in the Spiritual and Physical by Billy Edward Albert Meyer. The terrestrial human race is entering and witnessing a phase of very powerful cosmic change. It is a new era, a new age, which continually and distinctly becomes clearer to the eyes of observant, consciously more advanced human beings. While most of mankind here on earth lies in a deep abyss of ignorance and of consciousness enslavement, it has become an urgent necessity, through thorough investigations, to find the causes of mankind's decline, and to demonstrate this to human beings in a correct, clear, and revealing message and lesson. Simultaneously, it necessitates showing new ways, which would guide mankind toward a future of conscious comprehension and harmony. It is now time, therefore, for the earthling to open his eyes and ears and detach his enslaved thoughts from false teachings, to free himself from traditional falsehoods and all evil, and to finally comprehend everything according to the truth. May the earth human therefore open the senses of his consciousness now to recognize truth. May he look up toward the infinite expanse of the universe, where in timelessness the stars rule in majestic peace and exaltation. May he gaze up to these stars, which, in creative order, orbit through innumerable year millennia in perfect harmony with the universally valid laws of creation, and in fulfillment of the commandments to be followed. As is the case on earth, these stars are all ruled by creative laws and commandments which are integrated into the logic and love of creation itself. There is an eternal activity of growing, timeless existing and ceasing in the endless beginning. May the earthling look down on his earth, because there, too, the same laws and commandments of creation take place in ironclad order. Man, earth, and its manifold forms of life are all part of these same laws and commandments, as a minuscule yet significant link in the chain of all creative creation. Where nature exists by the creative laws and commandments, untouched by human hand and untouched accomplishes its existence, there reigns absolute and perfect beauty, strength, dignity, and harmonious greatness without any hierarchy. However, wherever there are traces of human intervention, deliberate illogical order and corrections become visible, all beauty, strength, dignity, order, and greatness disappear. Harmony is destroyed, changed, and made impossible. Nature then becomes, unintentionally, a witness to the lack of reason and injudiciousness of the earthling, who likes to call himself the, crown of creation. As a self-appointed crown of creation, man lives in his delusion, unaware of the fact that he has put on a crown of which he is unworthy. The crown in question is far too large for him and he cannot wear it, for it threatens to crush him under its weight. Truly, the earthling has developed and, splendidly advanced, to the turning point of the approaching year 2000. He has taken himself to the brink of a deep abyss and placed himself before the fangs of the beast of lunacy, driven by false doctrines and religious cults of malicious degeneration, which brought forth hatred, greed, vice, misery, lust, and bloodshed. He, the earthling, self-appointed, crown of creation, who rules or wants to rule the world and the universe, who have conquered the air, water, and fire, has long ago forgotten how to be a true and sincere human being, and how to think, act, and live by pure, spiritual standards. Hence, he has essentially forgotten how to live as a valuable human being in the, community human being. He has forgotten to live as a valuable person in communion with other persons. All his forms strive for purely material and materialistic objects and concerns and he badly disregards all matters of spirit progress, love, truth, knowledge, logic, and wisdom. Since ancient times man on earth has wanted only one thing to obtain power, power under all circumstances. Upon gaining his power, man has simply used it for enslavement and bondage. Fighting has always been his sole war cry and the manifestation of hell his victory. Through very evil and consciousness enslaving false doctrines, usually in cult-like religious form, man has created coercion and hypocrisy. Through them he spoke of honor and freedom, but in reality he was only thinking of consciousness enslavement, profit, and exploitation in every way, 
and absolute dependence. Man on earth has forgotten how to show his true face long ago, for he has hidden and lost it within himself with the dawn of religious false doctrines. Because of this he now wears only a colorful mask whose effect is very stale, monotonous, indifferent, stoical, egotistical, and mask-like. Many earth humans have become like beasts or consciously deranged robots of the cult's false doctrines. Lacking a consciousness that is in agreement with wisdom, and in a form alien to wisdom, people spend their days, months, and years on earth ignorant of even the tiniest amount of truthful truth. Maliciously and dishonestly they strive only for power, greed, materialism, and hatred against their fellow men and themselves. On the day their life clock stops ticking they die, filled with fear, disharmony and hatred. Man has made everything subservient to him through his intellect and reasoning, and by arranging and manipulating everything around him. His ambitions thrive only on this subordination. Appearance has become far more important to him than the truth of being. He lost the eternal truth of the spirit and creation in its basic elements, and has clung since earliest times to unrealistic doctrines of cults. Due to his self-delusion, he valued enslaving and false doctrines far more than all the laws and commandments in their truth and wisdom. Because of his extremely poor, confused, cult-religious philosophy of life, Man believed that by rejecting the true creative laws and commandments, and by creating orders based on human laws, he could reform mankind in accordance with these unrealistic cults or lead it to a better future of improved living potential. Having lost the knowledge of creation's essence in man, he wanted to force other human beings into living, using materialistic means and false religious doctrines. That is why he has enchanted the masses of terrestrial mankind with false promises, false ideals, and idols associated with false doctrines of cults. Within a short time this path led to enslavement, consciousness constraint, exploitation, hatred, greed, and vice of the gravest extent. Wherever a remnant of trust has remained, man soon transformed it rapidly and incessantly into vicious distrust and deadly hatred. The earthling has gradually removed himself ever more from the true life, from the spiritual intent that originated in creation. Man has lost his knowledge of the most ancient truth and wisdom, namely, that he is the criterion for all creative things, in creation of creation's own perfection within itself. Now the change of time and the course of a new cosmic era necessitate with great urgency, that the earth human turn once again in his aspirations and thinking toward the creative spiritual truth and the real values of spiritual and conscious life. Until now only a minute sector of humanity knew, or even suspected, that the human life form inhabits not only the terrestrial sphere, but also lives throughout the vast areas of the universe. Similarly, only a fraction of these human beings knows that the human spirit and consciousness project into the spheres of creation that cannot be perceived through material senses. Creation, however, is the true abode of every spirit form and, consequently, of each human being as well, within whose physical body a part of creation itself lives. Truly, it is in the interest of every human being to strive for, and attain, spiritual and conscious expansion and depth, in order to revise his present concept of life. It is a concept of life, which had followed purely materialistic and unreal paths of faith as its course and, as a consequence, propelled the truth of the spirit into severe damnation. A reversal, however, will not be easy, because its path is overgrown with vines and thorns. Concerning the most crucial truths, Frequently opposite directions have to be taken, because man must learn that through the existence of his creative spirit he possesses for all duration of time an immortal part, namely the spirit a spirit that works together with the creative realm and does not play servile role as it has been stated by cults. In fact, each human being must prove to himself that his spirit works in a creative manner, and that he must find his perfection within himself to ensure perfection in creation itself. For those who have gained this knowledge, there will grow an inescapable obligation to put their own material life in the background, 
and to guide their spiritual existence toward creation's monumental viewpoints, which contain an endless continuity in their constant transformation. A human being of truth knows no prejudices, for a preconceived opinion impedes any questioned discovery, and honesty itself. A human being of truth knows perfectly well that all truth and wisdom lie in the timeless flow of permanence, so that no preconceived opinion can rightfully exist. Only facts of truth can be facts of truth, and only facts of truth can be facts of wisdom. Nothing else can be integrated into it. This is a law of the entire process of all that occurs, because every existence must complete itself in a cycle. Cause and effect find validity in all spheres if they are governed by laws and commandments. A preconceived opinion harbors all the illogic of doubt and untruth. When a human being begins to absorb within himself this information, he may obtain a clear understanding of a vicious human weakness, namely, whether or not he is beyond the standpoint of preconceived doubts and criticism or still dominated by prejudice. If he is still biased toward preconceived opinions, he ought to put this message aside and pass it on to those who are free from prejudice in their quest for truth. Throughout the entire universe many variations of life forms manifest themselves based on a specific law. It is creation's massive and invisible influence which, as an unsolvable mystery, brings about endless continuity and endless transformation. Everything that breathes life in the universe is bound in time and space by this unsolvable and mysterious law, with the exception of the spirit forms, which exist under the same law, but are not subject to time and space limitations. Originating from within creation, the spirit form, however, is not impaired in its existence by the law of mortality. Likewise, everything that lives on earth is interconnected and subject to time and space and, therefore, to the law of existence in time and space. It is a bond of conditions in space and time, which represent a regularity of solidly fused order, the transformation of space and time in material form, the beginning and declining of coarse matter. By possessing the knowledge of all prior facts of the past concerning terrestrial humanity, we are taught that in the most ancient days when mankind still lived in harmony with and observance of the creative laws and commandments, people's spiritual aspects and forms totally agreed with the existing natural laws. Consequently happiness, knowledge, wisdom, peace, freedom, logic, and love, as well as tranquility and contentment, were all part of this solidly fused order. With the self-alienation from the truth of creation its laws and commandments, and through false doctrines that degenerated into religions, malicious things were cultivated, for example common hatred, discord, slavery, bloodshed, envy, greed, egoism, quarreling, and many other inhumane manifestations. Now it is important to analyze and reveal the sustaining, destructive, negative, and degenerative forces anchored in man, so as to show the path of truth, freedom, and wisdom, which is to guide man from the desolation of his consciousness. Only when the ancient, primary significance of life and the basic significance for man's existence in his life form are studied, can this path be charted. In the past ten thousands of years many persons of great personality have lived on earth and endeavored to answer the momentous questions as to the how, where, and why. Their endeavors, however, were futile, and the concepts they handed down until the present time have been trampled into aridity, today, as through all times. Many of these teachers and teachings were, knowingly or unknowingly, falsified and have become a part of irrational religious dogmas. By doing so, these teachings have been changed beyond recognition. Eternal truths have been disregarded or falsified, only because man found their observance very inconvenient. Even to this day man suffers from the harsh consequences. The bearers, heralds, and advocates of truth, the true prophets, have been kicked damned, cursed, despised, and robbed of their lives. The days of such incidents continue and are not over with here on earth. 
many New Age sages and heralds of truth shall suffer and endure a similar treatment, as the masses of humanity, misled by cults, malevolently make the heralds endure humanity's maniacal beliefs. However, the change of time, and the new cosmic era with all its penetrating truths, will help them in their struggle and ultimately bring forth victory. The present mankind on earth lives in wicked excesses of material desires and pleasures. Man's idea of a carefree life lies exclusively in a material world where fancy clothing and elegant residence the best of food and beverages, financial successes, profits, gratified lusts, and vices play the most dominant roles. In his erroneous, consciously false thinking, man identifies all of this as a satisfying existence, due to his lack of knowledge concerning truth, of course. The large mass of terrestrial mankind is only striving toward acquiring immense material wealth as quickly and effortlessly as possible, simply to attain power over others. The level of material wealth, the position one occupies in society, and the profession one chooses, determine the value of a person in the world, while his spiritual and conscious values, truly the only values of importance, are entirely disregarded, smirked at, trampled, and considered stupid. Currently, a man's reputation is measured solely by his financial standing, rank, and title. For these people, the fulfillment of their final yearning is a quiet and carefree old age, proud of having attained that high level of culture. However, while the pride of Earth's mankind in the height of its culture relates to the lowest values of acquisitions, man neglects all values of true culture when compared to the development of his consciousness. A life stripped of noble humanity does not receive much attention anymore concerning any mention of culture. Egoism, in its crassest form, is the strongest motivation of all human thoughts and actions and yet, Mankind is too cowardly to become aware of this fact or to admit it to themselves, even secretly. Due to the earthling's lack of courage to face the truth and his distorted lifestyle of degenerate hypocrisy, human beings fail to understand each other. Every human being lives secluded from others, deceiving and condemning himself, while, at the same time, begrudging his fellow man each breath of air. Many attempts have been made to bring truth and wisdom to the earthling, to offer him a life of knowledge of creation and to guide him toward the path of creation, its laws, and commandments. However, all attempts have thus far been in vain. Without exception, the ships of truth have sunk, becoming immersed in the terrestrial being's bottomless depths of lack of understanding. Truth-seeking human beings have never attacked the real evil at the root hence they have never been able to find knowledge. They were unable to grasp the evil by the root, because they have held a superficial and erroneous life awareness and lost their actual tasks, as they have replaced the bubbling wells of infinite existence with unrealistic religious dogmas, and have let them end in insanity. That which is timeless is eternal, and in timeless eternity rest the truth and wisdom of creative strength and omnipotence. The harder a human being strives to approach this truth, the easier it will be for him to live the laws and commandments in the creative order. The order of all infinite continuity will shine radiantly into man's life, provided he recognizes and observes the truth of creation, its laws, and commandments. Tranquility, peace and love shall become his life's companions through time and space, and are evidence of the perfection of creative harmony inner values. Truly, life is struggle, a repetitive dispute within one's own self. They are always the current events in life that try to divert our attention and thoughts by pushing themselves into the foreground. However, without fail, true reason will always break forth. It does not matter whether it is drowned out by noise, covered up, distracted, overburdened, stuffed to the brim, True reason is always present, ready to break through the mound of confusion, even though it may be only a hint of a smile. A smile that stands above all else, invincible, sublime, observing man as he degrades himself, reducing himself to dust. The self of man is the most precious pearl, 
the greatest treasure, which he carries within himself, hidden in his innermost part, in his self the philosopher's stone. It is silver and gold, but is not made of these metals, it speaks directly to man but man rarely hears it. It is the eternal light, the light of all great time in all the obscurity and gloom surrounding man. It wants to make man the king but man violates it. All of man's yearning for it causes him to search frantically outside himself. Yet, it is so near within every single human being. It is the union with it that makes man capable of procreating, and with it he can create everything. However, over the millennia there have always been only a few individuals who have joined forces with it, but through this action they have created the great knowledge for all, which is the cause for progression. Impulses and motives form the terrestrial world and environment, transforming and, consequently, creating increasingly improved external conditions, while the inner ones withered and vanished. Indeed, a reversal shall gradually become necessary in today's modern times to return to the inner values and immortal treasures for which man has searched so long outside of his self. Man has lost the appropriate measure, however, and has had to learn how to find it once again, in order for him to balance all extremes and to finally proceed to the essentials, namely, why man lives on this earth. Therefore, may all those who possess the foresight be recognized and respected by the laggards. The number of those who err again and again is almost infinitely large. One might ask how many errors and mistakes remain before the last human being on earth finally comprehends where the path shall lead to, and truly does. Really, truly and verily, life is a struggle, even in joy and in love. We are allowed only occasionally to forget about this struggle and let ourselves become spellbound by the latest topics, completely fascinated by the eternal process of growing and perishing, and by the up and down and to and fro of all vital motions, which transform everything, including man. The only hope is in the inevitable and the higher, joyful gill of passing into the next higher class where the lessons and practical tests continue. Therefore, man of earth, when you read these words, let it be said perform your duty, especially here and now, and surrender yourself to what lies before you. Inspired art will permit you, earthling, some fleeing glimpses into the beauty of the spirit whose sensations you are occasionally allowed to grasp for yourself. It is absolutely essential, therefore, that you be of an animated, easygoing and relaxed nature. An important word. The yearning for certainty burns indelibly in every single human on earth, especially the certainty of being and the existence far beyond his terrestrial passing away, which man calls death. This certainty can become true for every single human being once he conquers his own ego. Truly, it is only the ego's haze that prevents envisioning the kingdom of true life, spiritualness, beyond the transformation of being and the passing on. That is because the ego, the, I, places too much emphasis on a person's own welfare until it becomes egoism with most humans. Doubts and uncertainties hang like dark storm clouds over each individual and, in fact, over all of mankind. Man on earth is surprised by the thunder and flashes of lightning, brought on by egoism, materialism, and the remaining degrading things to which he has succumbed making him their prisoner. To combat them must become a great priority for man. Only when, through cognition of truth, the sun of love, which embodies the manifestation of the spirit of life, rises on the horizon of the human psyche to chase away the thunder clouds, is man permitted to recognize how close he really is to the certainty, and how unfounded his fear and anguish have been? Unfortunately, even now for many people only the death of their physical body signifies the beginning of true life and the gradual, renewed radiance of the inner Soha. However, in the next incarnation the same situation may arise again through man's lack of knowledge in the previous life, if, at that time, he had not been arduously struggling and laboring for improvement. 
The gloom of absolute or partial darkness during an existence on Earth can only be terminated through a true inner paling genesis, at which time man shall see the light of the inner senses, when the activity of the spirit of life will no longer appear as the gloomy fate that man falsely had created for himself. Ultimately, when the Sahara has begun to shine within man, he will discern the invisible, the power of the spirit and its unlimited strength as the true force while this visual effect begins to disappear again as a shadowy pattern, but lingers on as a continuous and stimulating recollection, to be effective and beneficial for further evolution. It still remains true of many earth beings that their naked fear lurks behind all love and the desire for all loving oneness. Man fears everything the end of love, the death of a loved one, separation and reunion, and above all, the change from this plane of existence to the beyond. Closely linked to these fears is the pain caused by bogus knowledge and bogus teachings, namely that all life will end forever in death, always living off other lives which it destroys and supposedly must destroy to exist itself. A truly terrible thought. Yet, it is one of terrestrial origin only and emanates from the lack of understanding of true truth. It is correct insofar as every life lives off others. However, life he does not murder other lives to be able to exist and to live itself. One life is integrated into another, one life helps the other, only to expire itself at a given time once its time and duty are completed. Life is neither the continuous sacrifice nor the becoming a sacrifice the earth human falsely assumes and fortifies through correlated false doctrines. Rather, in truth. It is only a process of growing and passing away in a sense of continuously advancing evolution, and solely in the sense of the creative rules, laws and commandments into which even creation itself is integrated in every way. Therefore, for many great times life is a process of rebirth and renewal in the cycle of passing away and growing again. Thus, expiring and death reach into the heart of life in the same way that life and growth extend deeply into the heart of death, whereby two realms merge into one, simultaneously complementing and conquering one another, to gradually bring about mutual comprehension. Life does not strive for vanquishing every single decline and death but for overcoming disease and formation in general through evolution. Life works toward the progressive evolution of everything that has ever existed or now exists. It works toward that which is immortal in the innermost of myriads of life forms, toward the final goal of all creations, and toward creation and the universal consciousness. Simply stated, the real meaning of life in the material state is, in fact, the mastery over one's ego, which constantly wants to dominate, and the subsequent evolution in the awareness of the consciousness and the spirit. Therefore, conquering oneself means that man must help his own highest being to victory, so he may recognize yet another still higher self, namely, the creative self. Man will be awakened toward it through an even higher evolution. This is certainly one of the most difficult tasks of human life. Yet, it is the most beautiful, most valuable, and productive, as beyond this task waits for man the greatest certainty of his all great time existence beyond all external and physical forms of being. Because the human life spirit within him is a fragment of the spiritual energy of creation, it is important for him to recall the creative root of his being to unite through true spiritual introspection with all that within himself which is of the all great time. To be one with the spirit of life within himself, the part of creation in him, means becoming absolutely free. Free from the fear of passing away, of death. To be one with a fragment of the creative energy within also means recognition of the alter ego, the creative self, beyond the external human ego. It is certainly the greatest experience, but for an inwardly still unprepared person also the most frightening one to encounter to truly see and recognize oneself one's own oldest ego, which reaches beyond all spheres and boundaries, floating past all senses into the all great time regions of creation, which are beyond human comprehension. Whoever unites with the fragment of creation within oneself, with the spirit itself, dissolves the frightening, yet truly innocuous enigma of passing on, indeed, of death.
In so doing, one acknowledges death as only the other side of life, where it is nothing other than sleep, replacing daytime wakefulness in the physical realm. Man's lack of reason, his lack of knowledge, and his blindness make him believe that sleep is the darker side of life. As a result he has the same opinions concerning death. Certainly, various other factors are reflected in the fear of death but it does not make sense to name them all. Only one more item remains to be explained. The mystery a human body can solve only partially when it is abandoning life, can be manifested clearly and truthfully by the fragment of creation in humans, namely, the certainty of absolute human permanence in the all great time. The human being should direct his vision unwaveringly toward the tasks of his life on earth, with the knowledge that the realm of coarse matter rules in this plane and the realm of fine matter in the beyond. Nevertheless, these two divided spheres of the here and the beyond are one single realm, existing in the same place, in the same time-space only in another dimension. It certainly may seem as though the sum of hardships and suffering on planet Earth is much greater than that of joy and happiness. To believe that this is indeed a fact is but one of man's fallacies. This belief has become a perilous notion, transmitted and implanted through false doctrines and confusion. Such notions are unnecessary, however, because hardships and suffering, as well as joy and happiness, always keep each other in balance. Man overrates hardships and suffering solely through his erroneous considerations, and registers and keeps them on permanent recall, while he forgets the joyous and happy events all too quickly, which then elude him. In these matters, man has not yet learned to find balance, to register the negative as well as positive in the same way, and to preserve them in his memory. The same would hold true for the opposite case, if man were to remember only the positive beauty, joy, love, and pleasantness. Here again is no balance between the negative and the positive, one form takes the upper hand over the other, resulting in a state of non-assimilation or non-integration, which means that again one factor prevails over the other. In spite of this circumstance, Man is capable of seeing and recognizing his determination as a human being and he can change the situation and attain an island of Sahar and security from the occurrences of Gluaminis. The length of time required need not be a worry or concern, because until the highest gale becomes reality, millions and billions of years may have tumbled into the past. Millions and billions of years are accorded and offered to man to smooth out the crumpled face he had caused his own home planet. Yet, he must be devoted at this time to the change offered to him for intervention in the evolutionary goal, to truly grasp the helping hand and proffered knowledge and truth, and to work toward this goal. Billy Edward Albert Meyer The End